is Jess here and I'm here to talk to you all about expat living in Hong Kong. Today we are in Kowloon City. So Time Out Hong Kong has deemed Kowloon City as one of the most coolest neighborhoods in the world. So we're going to take a look to see how Kowloon City is. So Kowloon City, it actually has a long history. Well, Kai Tak used to be the place of where the old Hong Kong airport used to be before it moved to like over there. Kowloon City used to have regulations not to have any of the buildings above a certain level because the airplane has to land at the airport. So, uh, so all the old buildings are actually kind of quite low, but now that the airport has moved over to the other side, there's a lot of new high rises and a lot of development in this area. I love Kowloon City. It is my second most favorite neighborhood in Hong Kong after TST Dean Sa Joy. There's a lot of Thai culture influences in Kowloon City as you will see so I'm just exiting the MTR station it's quite a long walk maybe like five minutes from like getting out of the gate so what is there to do in Kowloon City well Kowloon City is becoming a very very like hipster kind of like a hipster vibe hub there's a lot of coffee shops there is the Kowloon walled city so they kind of demolished this massive conglomerate of a bunch of buildings that had like illegal trade, a lot of illegal businesses. So now it's turned into a park. I last went there when I first came to Hong Kong. So I haven't been there in like seven years. Uh, there's quite some pretty good Thai food here. So today we will be going to those places. So it's 10.30 right now. It's starting to get really hot. So I think we're gonna try to go to Kowloon Walled City Park first. So I am Googling it and it's about an eight minute walk from the MTR station. Getting really hot. I don't know what it's about. Kowloon City, but it's always especially hot. Maybe because it's like right next to some mountains or something, it is not really near the, the waters. So, Kowloon City is actually very hot, and so we're going to the Kowloon City Wall Park, and I'm going to figure out how to get there. As you can see, there's a lot of Thai restaurants here. It is Sunday at 10:30, so I think they're still kind of closed. So in Hong Kong, if you're craving Thai food, the best place is to go to Kowloon City. It's uh, really hot today. I have been walking for two minutes, and I'm already sweating. <laughs> Gotta love Hong Kong. It's like, today is September 29th, it's almost October. Usually in Hong Kong, as soon as it hits like October or the end of September, I'm like, it's cool, but I don't know what it's about. This year it's been raining so much and it's been super hot. So have my trusty umbrella because it's freaking sunny today. Now we are in the Kowloon City Wall Park. This is the park where they tore down the Kowloon Wall City and they have put up this park to kind of create a memory of the Kowloon Wall City. So now we're approaching the south side of the wall when it was here. So you can see here behind me, behind me, uh, it is the structure of the old Kowloon City. And you can see that there are beams, there are metal rods that held up the structure, uh, which was, I think it was demolished in like 1992 or something like that. I'll confirm it. Okay, so here it's saying, this is like an exhibition of the Kowloon City and to kind of commemorate the memories and the history here. So this is like the exhibition of the history of so in Kowloon City, there were a lot of illegal businesses. There were a lot of unlicensed dentists and I guess drug war gangs, prostitution. That's why it's quite uh, fascinating. There's a lot of books and a lot of people who have came here during the time to take pictures of what it used to look like. So it's quite, quite a fascinating place, but I am so sweaty, so I'm gonna go back right now. Here is a well. There used to be a lot of wells in Kowloon City. So here is a depiction, depiction of what it would look like inside of the Kowloon City wall. You can see it's very, very squishy. Yeah, there's probably a lot of cockroaches and mice there, so I don't think I would like to live there. Hey, there's also a really nice garden, like Chinese style garden. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but I am extremely sweaty. Really need iced coffee. Yeah, don't come to Hong Kong in the summer. <laughs> so I finally made it to the shade and I can 
it's a lot cooler now. <laughs> uh, so people are just buying their daily provisions. So in Hong Kong, actually, it's not like in Canada where we in Canada buy like one week of food at a time at a grocery store because we have to drive there and it takes a long time. But people in Hong Kong actually pretty much buy their food fresh daily and they come down to the market and they buy the food. It's actually quite funny because like as a Canadian, I'm so accustomed to buying like a week's worth of food all the time when I used to cook. I don't cook anymore. I do a meal plan. But people were like, why are you buying so much food? And I was like, because you know, you buy like a week's worth or like half a week's worth. But um, yeah, people here don't really buy that much food at a time. So very cultural. In uh, Kowloon City, you can see there's like meat shops, there are fruit shops, it's just like some shape So I did do a video about shopping in wet markets in some shape and then just cooking it in my tiny flat back then. So right now we're heading to a coffee shop. It's called Dai Mo Tong. So actually it was opened in 1932 as a Chinese medicine store. And it was converted only a few years ago into a coffee shop. So it's quite it's got quite like a interesting artistic feel because you're having coffee in a Chinese medicine shop. Yeah, usually it's very busy, so I recommend to go early. See, so this is this is how you cross the street in Hong Kong. Like just hope, try not to get hit by a car. Oh, all right. Okay, so we made it to the Dai Wa Tong. And uh, actually it's not that busy. Like back then when it was a pandemic, like people literally would like line up. Like it would have been like a 40 minute wait to go in, but I don't think there's much line up right now. So I'm gonna head on in. When you are on the street, you will notice the old style kind of sign on top. And then inside you would have, uh, you can see they have like Chinese medicine like drawers. So this is what it looked like back in the, the 1920s. And in, um, yeah, in, in 2018, it converted into a coffee shop. Got a bit of like a nostalgic feel, so yeah, let's head on in. I've ordered a Dai Wang Tang Latte, which is a cafe latte mixed with honey and all grey tea. I've also ordered this really interesting like bowl of flour with foie gras. I don't really like foie gras, but it looks really interesting, so I thought I'd try it. The interior of this place is very interesting. It's got like concrete walls and it's got a lot of history. There are a lot of like old photos of what this place used to be. Got a very modern aesthetic, but also mixed in with a bit of the old style, which is what I really like. I was really craving for a iced coffee, but they only have it in hot only, but that's okay. Uh, the air conditioning is really nice, and all the sweat is like evaporating already. Okay, so I'm gonna try the tea. Really wish that it was cold, but. Okay, so I got the Dai Wang Tong Bo Lo Yang, which is the pineapple, but instead of butter, it has like foie gras. So it's a tiny little pineapple bun, and it has like a dollop of some Erasmus flour, and it has like a little slice of, I think it's foie gras. It is so cute. It's tiny, maybe the size of like my palm, and it comes on a cute like piece of Paper. That looks like the Chinese calligraphy, like what you use to practice your Chinese calligraphy. Yeah, it's got, no, it's got that like jelly thing in it. See? <laughs> Not sure. I think I'd rather have the foie gras as opposed to like a big stick of butter because I don't like to eat a big stick of butter. I think it's foie gras is a great substitute for the giant butter because if you do eat like a giant butter you get really like sick afterwards but i think having the foie gras is a lot better i think the jelly thing is quite good it's really great because it's quite crunchy when you bite into it and then when you bite down into the foie gras it's like a buttery thing that melts in your mouth so yeah definitely highly recommend trying this and getting the dai wal tong latte when you come here and to also to experience the vibe here it's a 
super Hong Kong. So now I am well air conditioned. <laughs> My sweat has dried off. And now it is lunchtime. So I'm gonna head to the Kowloon City Market. And also there's a cook food center there. I have not eaten in the cook food center there before, so let's check it out. While we're walking there, I want to mention that because there's a large Thai community in Kowloon City, it's also a very good place to get a Thai massage. It is one of the cheapest places to get a Thai massage in Hong Kong. Uh, I think it used to be like, it used to be 200 Hong Kong dollars. And then I think after the pandemic, it's like 250. Okay, so we are in the Kowloon City market. They're selling like fresh fish, they're selling fresh meat, they're selling fresh vegetables don't slip on the floor uh, I don't need to buy anything but I want to check out the cook food center oh there's like fish balls again <laughs> I'm really good for hot pot uh, um, so I'm gonna go to the cook food center I don't know where the cook food center is oh I think it might be upstairs okay heading back upstairs to the cook food center yeah, the escalators in Hong Kong, uh, in the MTR, are really fast, but when you go to other places like the cook food center or the market, it's super slow. So I feel like I'm calling. calling. So I am on the second floor of the cook food center. The second floor of the cook food center sells items. So there's like, I see some aprons. Clothing, aprons. The first floor is like food and meat and fish and stuff. Second floor is like clothes and towels. Yeah, I don't think anything's open. Oh, this is place, this Thai food place, Thai Yun Siu Sik. This Thai place is open, so maybe some Thai food. I am still very, very full after that full gras. Here I am, they brought over uh, like bowl for me to wash. Uh, in Hong Kong, when you go to like cook food places, uh, be sure you wash because <laughs> lovely. <laughs> lovely. Okay, so I ordered a Thai flat rice noodle. It's a beef one. It's looking pretty good, so I'm not too hungry, but yeah, I'm just gonna dig in. So I think I'm actually running out of space on my SD card, so I guess that's it for my video. If you do like it, please give it a thumbs up and click like and subscribe for more on Expat Living in Hong Kong. Bye guys!